Uh, let me bring in Chris Doyle, who joins me live from London. He is a Middle East commentator and the director at Council for Arab British Understanding. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Your thoughts first on what we're seeing unfold. Well, extraordinary to see all of these protests going across universities in the United States, which are acting also as a, tr a trigger, an enabler of protests also in other countries. We're seeing these now spread into the United Kingdom. And I think it's important to remind people why these are happening. It's happening because in Gaza, we are seeing a situation of possible genocide. We're seeing a situation of famine brought about as a matter of state policy. And there are, thankfully, a lot of people who are prepared to protest about this, to put their careers, their reputations on the line, to be able to say no, that they are demanding that these universities divest from the state of Israel, who is conducting these policies. So I think to an extent that Palestinians, of course, have been very bitter and angered at the policy of the US administration and of other countries, including my own Britain, they will be heartened to see that there is a great deal of public support to try to bring about a ceasefire and get aid into Gaza and divest from a state that has been clearly violating international law, committing war crimes with a degree of impunity that is quite extraordinary. So we see here very much something that I think a lot of Palestinians will identify with the desire of authorities in the United States to crack down on their rights to protest and freedom of expression. Yeah. And we have seen this not just over the last seven months, but actually throughout the course of this conflict, that desire that Palestinians and their supporters do not actually get the ability and the right to talk about their live realities and what they have witnessed to be shut down or to at least be mired in controversy the whole time. And I think, you know, talking to people who've been there at these protests, the coverage, particularly by the mainstream media in the United States of these protests, has been extraordinary for its bias and lack of balance. The way in which these protests have been characterized mm -hmm. echoes also mm -hmm. the way in which Palestinians seeking their freedom on the ground in the occupied Palestinian territories, uh, that they also have been traduced as well. Right, the determination and consistency of the protesters uh, is not only putting immense pressure on the administration of the universities itself to divest from companies that are linked to Israel, but it's also putting pressure on the U.S. administration, the Biden administration, to do more in reaching a ceasefire uh, and to not be complicit in the war crimes that Israel is committing in Gaza. How effective do you think this pressure is going to be in bringing real change? It remains to be seen. I think that these protesters clearly wish to remain. I think one issue here is, yes, whilst they are getting a lot of attention for the protests, there is a risk that the whole crisis becomes about the protests and not about Gaza. And it distracts from the horrors that we are seeing on the ground, that the protests themselves become the story instead of what they are protesting about. And it really is important to make sure that we do remind people exactly the horrors of what these protesters are trying to stop. And I think that is in some, uh, some way the risk. The Biden administration, regrettably, has been so weak, it has the ability to stop, I believe, what Israel is doing. It could stop the Israeli ground invasion of Rafah that is imminent. It has so many levers to hold this Israeli government in account. And just take one thing, that we now know that the American administration is putting pressure on the International Criminal Court not to issue arrest warrants against Israeli leaders. Now, what is that? It's an, another example of how the US administration, not just Biden's, but previous ones, is always there to protect Israel, no matter what its government is doing. And that is why there is so much anger, not just amongst students, but amongst the general public. If you look at opinion polls across Europe, overwhelming majorities say there should be an immediate ceasefire. 
there should be an arms embargo on the state of Israel. So these protesters are actually in alignment with public sentiment, not the administration, not the governments in Western Europe who are out of sync with how people are viewing this. Right. So what started in Columbia University uh, has now sparked worldwide protests in universities across the globe. As you mentioned, we're seeing similar scenes uh, in universities in London where you are. Can you give us a sense of what students there are saying? Well, in Britain, we've actually had huge protests regularly in the centre of London and in other cities. So perhaps unlike the United States, we've actually had these mass protests that hadn't been quite that impetus at universities, but there are now definitely uh, sit-ins at various universities in London, in Manchester, in Leeds, in Newcastle, and other major urban centres around the country. And they are inspired by what's going on in the United States. We have seen this before in previous Israeli wars on Gaza, that student politics here is very vib vibrant. They are prepared to stand up against the political establishment that has done so little. And it will spread into other countries. I'm quite sure that student politics is radical at the best of times, and they are prepared to face up to the police who are trying to uh, break these up, carrying out arrests, and of course, the very, very dramatic and unpleasant scenes of uh, anti-Palestinian uh, mobs attacking uh, these students at UCLA. This is something that needs to be stopped, and American leaders need to speak out against that uh, in, in, in the same way that they've obviously mm -hmm. spoken out when they feel that there have been protesters uh, from the other point of view who have transgressed the law. Right. While our ultimate focus should, of course, be, uh, you know, Israel's atrocities in Gaza, as you mentioned, the headlines are being dominated by these protests that are taking place predominantly in the United States. But just help us understand why these protests are happening uh, and just remind us of the protesters' demand and why it's such a big issue and how affiliated these universities are with the government of Israel. Well, the protests are happening because there's such a chasm between the positions of the administration, U.S. administration, and indeed the British government or German government, French government, and public sentiment. And that is because people are very clearly seeing what is happening in Gaza. They see all the videos. They see the social media. They understand what is going on. It's very crystal clear. You see apocalyptic scenes in Gaza. And I think right-thinking people are saying, what is going on here? We are not trying to stop this. We are pussy, pussyfooting about as, as governments. And so students who, of course, congregate politically on all sorts of issues, one remembers, for example, the protests against the Vietnam War or against apartheid, are taking this up. And uh, it, they will tend to gather huge crowds, universities, epicenters, of political debate and protest always have been, and they should be encouraged uh, to be so. It is the vibrant stuff of, of politics. And many of these universities, and this is why what they are demanding, have huge investments within Israel, including within companies affiliated to their uh, industrial military complex. And they want a commitment from them to uh, divest fully from this so that they are not in any way complicit with what the state of Israel is doing right now. So that is a demand, for example, from Columbia University that the students are making. And they are refusing to adhere to that demand. They are refusing to divest from it. Okay. So I can see this carrying on for a very long time. All right. Chris Doyle, thank you so much for being with us here and sharing that uh, analysis with us. Let's cross back.